We're talking New York Giants football on the Our Lads Football Network, and that means Ryan Dunleavy from the New York Post is stopping on by. How's it going, Ryan? What's up, Greg? How are you? I'm doing good. This is uh, you know, March and April, really two of the best months of the year as far as being a sports fan. So, it really is. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, you got yeah. so much going on and uh, free agency, and then the uh, draft is uh, definitely a huge I part of it. If you cover or root for the Giants or Jets, March and April are like the two best months of the year. The games suck. You get killed every week. It's it's all about uh, <laughs> it's all about like the draft and free agency and hope for next year. Yeah, don't remind me. Uh, but uh, we're doing a New York Giants show, so you must. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, first of all, <clears throat> is talk about we're gonna go through the Giants' top needs in the offseason. We're recording this right now on Friday, uh, the 8th of March. So we just have, you know, a few more days to go before free agency kicks in and, um, and then a whole month or so before the draft, but still giants are not going to take care of everything in free agency. You can't do that, but let's get started by going down the top five, uh, needs for the New York giants this off season, Ryan. And we're going to start with offseason in need number five. Uh, I'm going to go with quarterback, uh, it could not be on this list. It could be higher on this list. It really is. Depends on what you think of Daniel Jones. <clears throat> the Giants have lost some faith in him since giving him that four-year, $160 million extension. That was not a good idea to do. Teams around the league know it wasn't a good idea to do. I think the Giants regret it a little bit. And the reason is because of the injuries, right? I mean, he got two more serious injuries last year. On top of his injury history before that, he's rehabbing a torn ACL right now. So they say he'll be ready to start week one, but they uh, on one side of the mouth, on the other side of the mouth, they talk about adding a quarterback. So if you add a free agent veteran journeyman quarterback, that's one thing. I think they'll probably draft a quarterback with one of their first two picks. So I'll go quarterback as need number five, though. You could argue they don't if you believe in Daniel Jones, but I, I think that they will add a at least a quarterback capable of challenging Jones, if not someone who will be handed the job of, above him eventually. Okay. And that could be a veteran or a draft pick. It could be. I think it'll end up being a draft pick. I think they're in rebuild mode. All right. Off season need number four. Uh, this could be number one. Uh, that's how, that's how dearth the giants are uh, t uh, talent wise. Uh, I'm going wide receiver. Uh, they've been, they haven't had a guy reach 800 yards receiving in a season since 2018 when that was, that was Odell Beckham. Uh, Darius Slayton's a good receiver. He'd be a good number two receiver. He's a good deep threat. He's led the team in receiving in four of the last five years. They just, they just don't throw the ball the way that they don't play modern football. And part of that is the offensive line. Part of that's the quarterback. And part of that is they just don't have that number one alpha guy uh it's time for them to go get that guy okay offseason need number three i went with need number three as cornerback uh adory jackson is a free agent they have deontay banks uh last year's first round pick who played well as a rookie but i look opposite deontay banks and i see well i don't know like uh cordell <laughs> flott or Trey Hawkins or guys that Joe Shane has drafted um, that haven't really panned out so far through one or two years. And look, it takes guys longer than that all the time in this league, but I don't know how you go into this season with that as you're playing at quarterback. Man, I don't think they're interested in resigning a Dory Jackson. I do think they need to have a veteran caliber and I'm not talking about an off the street. They got away two years ago with Fabian Moreau off the street as a starting corner when Adori played at a really high level. It's a lot to ask Deontay Banks to play at a super high level. So your number two corner can be a, you know, virtual off the street guy. I think you need to find a mid-level free agent to play corner two for the Giants. All right. Now the two big needs for the New York Giants. And again, this could, uh, like you said, this, this could be interchangeable, but the second biggest need for the New York Giants this off season. I'd say edge rusher. I mean, they have uh, Kayvon Thibodeau got 11 and a half sacks last year, but 
if you dive into those numbers, they he, he didn't have a great pass rush win rate. He didn't have a great pressure rate. He got a lot of sacks, which no one's complaining about. It's been a, a, the most sacks for a giant since like Jason Pierre Paul in 2014. So um, good. It was a good second season, a promising second season, and I think he'll be better if they have pressure coming off the other edge. Last year they had guys like Jihad Ward and like Tamon Fox and uh, it was the guy they the Isaiah Simmons, uh, Boogie Basham, guys that don't pose <laughs> really much of a threat. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them go after one of the Jets guys, Bryce Huff, in free agency. Um, so I think edge rusher is a big need. They have, and it's worth saying, they have Aziz Ojolari, their former second round pick, who's show, shown flashes of being a good pass rusher but he's never healthy and it's his walk year and i just don't see the giants banking on him uh after three years where he's been you know two years really where he's been consistently hurt i just don't see the giants penciling him in as a starter i think their best hope they hope he can be the third rotational guy basically all right here we go with the big one the most important offseason need for the new york giants is I'm kind of cheating here. I'm going offensive line, like the whole thing, like okay. uh, not guard, not right guard, not left guard, not right, the whole thing. Like, really? Wow. Essentially, you have left tackle Andrew Thomas, all pro. You have center John Michael Schmitz, was not very good as a rookie, but he's a second round pick last year. Yeah. He's going yeah. to start. You're invested in him. The other three spots are up for grabs, and that includes right tackle where Evan Neal is has been a bust through two years, the former number seven pick in the draft. So to me, what you do is you sign a left guard, no doubt about it, and then you sign another guy, a right, let's say Michael Onwenu, I think is probably one of their top targets, who has some guard tackle flexibility. And you know that Onwenu is going to start at one spot or the other. And then basically, if he's if Evan Neal is good in training camp. He's the starting right tackle, and when you's the starting right guard. And if Evan Neal is bad, <clears throat> then on when you is the starting right tackle, and somebody like Josh Zudu is the starting guard. That's how I see okay. it. You sign a guy with some flexibility uh, who could play either spot, and then it's basically it's not a head to head battle, but essentially it is between Evan Neal and some of the guards. All right, there you go. The uh, essentially, five. you need two two and a half starters on the offensive line. Yeah. It looks that way. Uh, matter of fact, there's a lot uh, that we are going to discuss here. So, uh, but we, we definitely uh, wanted to get in uh, just in this uh, condensed video, the top five needs for the Giants in the offseason. We've done that. So now we are going to uh, talk about the team in general uh, because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, well, let's look at it this way, Greg. I don't know where you want to start, but we just did the top five needs for the Giants, right? Yes. And I did, did not mention running back or safety yes. where they where they <laughs> could where they could lose two of the team's five best players in free agency. And then those would be big needs too, right? So absolutely man, you can't literally narrow it down to five needs for the Giants. And I've been doing this now with this format. I think you might be like the seventh or eighth, and nobody's had this problem. I mean, usually, usually it's like, all right, five. Maybe we could even squeeze in a fifth. Giants are like seven. I need, I need nine. Like, yeah, I need a whole team. But yeah, besides one or two players, there's a lot that the Giants have got to do. That's the whole point of it. All right, uh, let's now uh, take a look at. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to pop up on the screen here the Giants depth chart, the R Lads depth chart. So let's go ahead and uh, and share that for everybody. That's always cool. Go to rlads.com. We'll have a link in the description area for that. So there you go. This is the giant step chart. Uh, and we are going to – I tell you what, let's start with uh, – because there is a new coach. Uh, there's actually um, – uh, you know, and, and, and I don't know what about the scheme. You'll fill me in with that. But Shane Bowen comes in from Tennessee. Was there a linebacker coach for three years, the defensive coordinator the last three years? He seems to – a pretty similar uh, defensive scheme, uh, at least a three-four uh, kind of scheme. But tell me a little bit about what you think the differences might be from what you understand at this point. 
I don't know. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know a whole lot about Shane Bowen. I haven't even had a chance to really meet him, but he's going to run a three, four. He's they're going to be less, less blitz based than they were with Wink Martindale, which isn't a stretch because Wink Martindale is about the most blitz oriented guy in the league. There'll be less blitz based, more honest, more committed, I think against the run uh, than they were, you know, when they were just trying to make disruptive plays basically for Wink. I think there'll be a more honest defense, if that makes sense. Um, one of those bend, but don't break style, but there should be some similarities, right? I mean, uh, they both coached under D Wink and, and uh, Bowen both coach, both coached under Dean Pease. So like once you have, okay. once you have a, uh, once you have a mentor, a similar mentor, you probably have some similar sayings, some similar core beliefs. Uh, I think safety, what, from what I understand, safety play is important in this, in this uh, defense, which is why I was surprised the Giants didn't transition tag uh, Xavier McKinney. Uh, and I think you'll see some kind of New England based roots, you know, like maybe bigger nickel guys, um, because Bowen's main influence is Vrabel and Vrabel's main influence was Belichick. So I think you'll see some New England roots in this defense. OK, uh, we'll start on defense, of course. Uh, why not? And uh, so a lot to go over here. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, he's the stud. No doubt about that. Um Okuriki had a nice first year for the Giants, so that's nice. Uh, but b- b- beyond that, uh, yes, Thibodeau had 11 and a half sacks. Yet, as you mentioned in the other video, he still has a long way to go, but maybe it'll be helped if he can have some help. So let's start there. Let's start up front um, as far as the pass rush is concerned. Um, is, is, is Basically, Ojalary, the fact is, he, yes, he can't stay healthy. That's a big problem. So there really isn't anybody else out, out there helping Thibodeau. Therefore, this is a huge need. Matter of fact, you have this as their second biggest need in the offseason. Yeah, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted one of the big guys. Bryce Huff's the name that comes to mind. Um, but there's, a, you know, like uh, Danielle Hunter or whatever. He's, he, this is a win, this, he's a win-now player. This isn't a win-now team. So somebody like Huff makes sense because he's a developing pass rusher. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the pa- the pass rush is basically uh, Dexter Lawrence gets a lot of pre- pass uh, pressures for a nose tackle. I mean, he yeah. like quadruples everybody else in the league who plays his position. But he doesn't get a lot of sacks. I think he had four or five last year. He's just a disruptor. Thibodeau's a finisher. He gets, a, he has, like I said, 11 and a half. And then they really – cobbled it together last year with guys. I think Jihad Ward might've been third on the team in sacks and he is definitely not coming back. So um, where, where they go for there. I mean, like I said, the, the rest of that depth chart's pretty thin and less uh, uh, Jalari fine. Some guy, times guys do this, they put it together in their walk here. Uh, but I think he'll be penciled in more for that third kind of role. Well, let's also, as we go through this, let's, uh, let's, let's, first of all, uh, how is the cap space is fine, right? Uh, and, uh, yeah, do you expect the cap to- space is fine? Something like, uh, let me pull it up right here. According to overthecap.com, they have 38 million and they have room to extend that if they wanted to, uh, restructure either Dexter Lawrence or Andrew Thomas's, uh, uh, contract. So they have plenty of cap space. Okay. Will there be any, uh, cap casualties? Well, Mark Lewinsky was one already. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not necessarily, I mean, there could be other guys that are not, not, you know, big ones, not ones that create, not ones that create a, you know, a guy maybe who is uh, a million dollars here or there, but that's more of a cut than a casualty. Okay. Uh, What about draft capital? Uh, they have a first round pick, two second round picks after the w- additional one for trading Leonard Williams, uh, third round pick. They have all the top, they have all the top picks in an extra in the second round and okay. number six, number six overall to start. All right. So, uh, let's, uh, go over the rest of what this team needs to do defensively and stick, stick up front. Because again, you got Lawrence and it just doesn't look like there's anything else. Uh, Robertson's a free agent. Ward's a free agent, but what do you think there's going to be at least two impact players that they're going to have to add up front as well? I mean, impact player is, uh, (laughs) yeah, I've seen Uh, a lot. I've seen a lot of guys, the Giants sign who aren't impact players. Impact snap, uh, 
snap players. I think they will play. They will sign a big free agent at edge rusher again. I don't know who it is, but I think they'll yeah. sign a big free agent. And then I think they'll plug in other guys. Ashawn Robinson could resign. Okay, uh, he, he actually he played well for his contract last year. Uh, they thought uh, uh, Raheem Nunez Rochez played well. Uh, I think they'll try to get by with guys like that. But uh, I think you'll see at least. You'll see it probably as one guy get a big contract and one guy get a mid contract who plays a lot of snaps. I don't know if he'll be an impact player. Okay. And then they just resign maybe Robinson. Okay. Yes. Uh, as far as linebacker, so they're happy there. Uh, best, the- best spot on the team. We could just blow right past this. Like, I don't expect them to do much. Okereke is a stud. Uh, should have probably should have been a pro bowler. McFadden's outplayed his draft status. Um, I'm trying to think who uh, Isaiah Simmons. I don't think he'll be back. He's a free agent. Uh, Jared Davis missed the whole year. Um, but no, I mean, I don't think Darian Beavers is a guy. The last coaching staff was high on. It was coming off an ACL. I don't know if he can work his way back into it, but between McFadden and Okereke, they're set at starters. They'll just add depth around them. I think. Yeah. Cause four linebackers are free agents and even Isaiah Simmons, you don't think Cam Brown and, uh, and Coughlin. Uh, Coughlin both already said goodbye to the team. So they know they're not coming back. And they were honestly, those two guys were just special teamers anyway. They never played a snap. Okereke played every single snap last season, literally everyone. He was one of three guys in the whole league that did that. So uh, anything around him is just extra. Okay. And, and so Isaiah Simmons, he just, he, he, he didn't work out. There's, there's... It was fine. I mean, he never lived up to the number seven pick, but I think they traded a seventh round draft pick to get him. He was fine for the seventh round draft pick. He was a bit piece. Okay. He scored a game winning. T- he scored a game clinching touchdown. He made he made a couple flash plays, but he was not very good against the run and limited his snaps because of it. All right. Let's take a look at this uh, secondary. So, best guess on why you think they did not uh, sign McKinney. I really don't know. I've been scratching my head on it for like three days. Look, sources say they got close to a deal and they they knew that McKinney would be pissed if they transition tagged him because it would have limited his free agent market. So they did it as an act of goodwill towards, hey, we want you back if at our price, like, you know, maybe come back, give us a chance to match anyway, handshake agreement with a, a transition tag without a transition tag, basically. Okay. Um, other speculation is that if you lose a guy on the transition tag, he doesn't count into the comp pick formula. Whereas if you lose a guy, you don't transition tag, he counts into the comp pick formula. So if you're trying to get a pick in the 2025 draft, I mean, that's some real checkers on chess on checkers if you're thinking that far down the line when you're on the hot seat. But um, I guess, I mean, to me, I would have transitioned, especially after seeing the Patriots do it to Duggar, I would have transitioned, tagged them. But we'll see. I mean, it's an overly saturated safety market. Yeah. I mean, there are tons of safety. So if you don't, maybe that's part of it. Maybe they saw that coming and they said, if we're not going to get McKinney, we can get a bargain here and spend the rest of the money somewhere else. I don't know. But so far, it looks like it a good idea because maybe McKinney won't get the contract he wanted or maybe they'll get a comparable player for less because of the oversaturation. But I might be singing a different tune come next Friday. All right. So there is a shot, though. The Giants could get McKinney back. All right. Um, as far as the rest of the unit, well, start at safety. So uh, Pinnock looks like a, a nice piece. So a- outside of that, if they don't resign McKinney, then they have a major hole, correct? Yes. Uh, I would expect a Jordan Fuller or a Cameron uh, Curl, who I think are both nice young players that fit the Giants. Uh, They have ties to older guys like Bowen, obviously coached Kevin Byard in Tennessee to a Pro Bowl. Shane and Dable, obviously know Poyer and Hoyd from Hyde from Buffalo. I just see those guys. They're in their 30s. I just can't see them want to be part of this. rebuild so uh yes i would think that if they don't get mckinney they would turn to a younger guy like curl or uh curl or fuller and then dane belton's a probably a pretty good third safety 
Okay. But, uh, I know Giants fans are clamoring for him to get their sh- his shot next to Pinnock. I guess you could do that. I mean, I guess you could do that. But at some point, you got to have established good players. I mean, if you're telling me Dane Bel- Belton's a star in the making, okay. But it's been a long time since the Giants have had one of those guys. All right. Yeah, he had a nice uh, career, a college career, uh, and he was but fourth in his draft limited. Pick. And I'll say this: in his limited play during the two seasons. He's always around the ball. I mean, he has. Oh yeah. I don't know what I don't know what his stats in front of me, but he has probably three or four interceptions and a couple of forced fumble fumble recoveries for a pretty high rate per snap. So, well, that's probably why the fans want to see more. Okay, he has, uh, he has three fumble recoveries and four interceptions for not many for not many snaps. All right, corner. So Jackson, he just hasn't played like the uh, the player that first got here a couple years ago. Two so, years ago, he was awesome. So yeah. When the year they made the playoffs, he was awesome. Then he got hurt. Didn't have a good year last year. But I got to say this about Adoree Jackson. Did maybe the most unselfish thing I've ever seen an NFL player do. In his walk year, he volunteered to move from outside corner to slot corner for the betterment of the team. And played a position he wasn't really familiar with, okay. got off to a slow start. Then the Giants ended up benching Trey Hawkins, who they had – that's why they moved to Dorian. So he went back to outside corner, and then he just never really found a rhythm. He didn't have a great – he didn't have a great year like he did two years ago. Uh, I still think he's got stuff in the tank, but I think it's probably – a. I talked to him at the Super Bowl. He was there. I think both sides are probably looking to move on. All right. So he could be an underrated pickup for a playoff caliber team. Yes. Okay. Uh, Flot, how does he look for a third round draft pick? Like a third, li- like a third or later round draft pick. I mean, he's been a contributor. He looks like a guy who's going to play for your team for four years, and then you're going to let go somewhere else. That's okay. That's what he looks like. He's played on the slot and on the outside. They actually drafted him to play in the sl- in the slot, but he looks better on the he looks. Which I'm, way is I'm, it? I'm, I'm struggling right now. Inside, the, outside. It, I'm struggling to remember if which way it is, but uh, I, he's he's just so far from my memory at this point. But um, yeah, well, I, I, they were trying him on the they 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 he played in the slot. They tried to move him to the outside last year. He struggled. He's actually better suited, I think, for the slot. Okay. And speaking of the slot, Holmes is a free agent. So will he be back? No, he never played. I would be no. He he lost his job to 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 uh, Flot and to uh, Trey Hawkins and why he got buried on the depth wow. chart. He'll be gone. okay. And then Banks, first round draft pick, looks played like a keeper. Well. Yeah, played pretty well. I I mean, uh, PFF doesn't love him in their grades, but I thought by the eye test, I thought he played pretty well. Certainly doesn't back down from anybody as a swagger. At, we'll play sticky man coverage. I like him. I think he can play. All right. So bottom line is before we move away from the defenses, uh, they, they really only have a handful of guys that they can count on. So yeah, Lawrence, but- Lawrence Thibodeau and Okereke are high level players. The rest. Yeah needs to be filled and banks is and banks you know, yeah banks has Somebody. some banks has some upside the rest of them i think they need i think they need some pieces all right let's move over to the offense this is where it gets real interesting i'm not gonna say it's much better <laughs> no it's not uh but this is where most of the talk is uh centered around in new york with both quarterback and running back so let's talk about quarterback they invested in daniel jones that hasn't worked out, but it's just, you know, it's not like it's been five years uh, since they invested in him, but he gets hurt. Uh, there's talk about should they go after a new young quarterback and should they do it in the first round and just, you know, eventually move on from Jones or bring in a veteran uh, as almost like an insurance policy and hope that Jones can, you know, recapture something and stay healthy. What direction do you think they're going to go a quarterback? If you asked me before the NFL combine, my answer was, I think they're going to draft a second tier quarterback to compete with Daniel Jones. So like 
whether that's in the second round or trading up to late in the first round for a second first round pick for uh, Bo Nix or uh, Penix. That's what I thought they were going to do. Okay. After after the combine and after earlier this week where they let Saquon and McKinney te- test free agency, I mean, if you believe that a team has a plan, and I saw Dave Gettleman had no plan when he was the Giants GM. It was just like, do this, do this, do this, do this. If you assume Joe Shane has a plan, then this plan certainly indicates a rebuild, which makes me think that they will go in the direction of picking a quarterback in the top six picks, whether it's at six or trading up to four or three. I uh, I believe right now that that is what they're planning to do. Okay. So, uh, and, and what you're talking about then is. But they is, had Russell Wilson in for a visit today. So, yeah. Uh, so I guess maybe that's just a curveball. But if you're signing Russell Wilson and you have Daniel Jones and you have Tommy DeVito, are you really drafting a quarterback at six? I don't know. No. But that might just be a curveball. I think they'll draft a quarterback in the top six. Okay. And and then we've got time to figure out, but do you have any guesses based on uh, Dayball of which quarterback might fit his system best? It doesn't really matter who fits, right? It's who's there. They're not going to get one or two. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's I, true. Yeah. I, look, I – No, I mean, here's what I would tell you. The Giants seem like they're grooming themselves for Drake May. He's being coached by Eli Manning. He's being trained by David Morris, who also trains Daniel Jones and is Eli Manning's college roommate or best friend or whatever. So it looks like they're grooming themselves for Drake May. Uh, Jaden Daniels, from a skill set standpoint, seems to fit what Dable does. He likes to push the ball downfield. He is a runner. He's built much differently than Josh Allen, but you can do some certain certain RPO things with him. Uh, he's a big play machine. So like that from, from a talent standpoint seems to fit. And then I'm not high on JJ McCarthy, but all the buzz at the NFL combine was that the giants really like JJ McCarthy. So um, I can't rule him out. And honestly, he might be the only one they have a choice to get. Yeah. So, so uh, I guess those three guys. I, I really the only one I can rule out is Caleb Williams, and that's because he's going to be gone at one. So, and you don't think the Giants would be interested in Justin Fields? No, there makes no sense for them to trade okay. for Justin Fields. You got to extend him. You got to pick up his fifth year option before you ever see him play twenty five million dollars more at quarterback on top of Daniel Jones's forty. That makes no sense. And uh, Russell have- Wilson makes more sense because you only have to pay him like a million dollars a year. That's true. And so now also the situation is uh, that, that the big difference, of course, is is uh, you have to a lot to move up to get one of those two quarterbacks you talked about. Or you might just be able to stamp hat and uh, pick J.J. McCarthy. So um, that's that, that's a major difference. OK, uh, running back. So Barkley. What do you, where do you think? Bar- where do you think is going, first of all? I'm 60 40 right now for the field over the Giants. Like, it's not ruled out that he'll oh, return. Okay. To okay. So, uh, I still think both sides want to be with the Giants. But if another team makes a, the contract offer he wants, he's going to take it. This is his one shot at free agency. So, um, if I had to guess right now, I'd say it's between the Giants, the Texans, and the Cowboys. Um, where do I think he ends up? Pro- probably the Texans, but uh, that put it this way: there's a lot of free agent running backs, and there's maybe one team, the Texans, maybe two, the Cowboys, who are going to give out a you know upper level running back contract. Uh, so you better be the first one to sell. You better not dilly dally because if you are Saquon and you wait, then they'll just sign Josh Jacobs. If you're Josh Jacobs, you wait, they'll just sign. Austin Eckler, or whatever. So yep. or you better act fast if you're a running back. All right. So let's say, and, and by the way, Brieta, the number two guy, is also a free agent. So let's say they lose Barkley and Brieta. Um, well, let's just say they lose Barkley. What do you think they do at running back at that point? What they really want to do, which is uh, a tandem pair like Buffalo had when Joe Shane was there. That's what they really want to do. Like they don't. With that, with, does that include Eric Gray? I I would be surprised. Okay. I would be surprised. Uh, 
Maybe he gets third running back carries. Okay. Um, but I would think what they really want to do is something like sign Devin Singletary and Zach Moss or sign Zach Moss and Matt Breida, something like that. Like, okay. uh, I would think that's what they want to do. All right. And now let's talk about the receivers. Let's, let's, let's start off with tight end. So Waller, not exactly healthy. That's been an issue with him lately. Bellinger. And uh, you're, you're missing the headliner, which is Waller's considering retirement. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Uh, I wrote that for the post last week. Uh, he is considering retirement. Uh, it really doesn't matter to the Giants how long it takes him to decide because the salary cap, dead cap, and cap hit is the same whether he's on the team or whether he's cut or whether he retires. So okay. they're going to let him take his time and they're going to build the team basically like he's going to retire and not be back. So they're not like holding a spot for him. Okay. Uh, he told the athletic this week that he's not planning to have a decision by next week. So uh, that's free. So the giants got to act in free agency. Like they don't, I heard they were pretty aggressive in meeting with tight ends at the NFL combine. So that's uh, probably number two. They'll probably add a number two caliber guy, similar to like what I said at running back. I think they'll probably do that with Daniel Bellinger and insert a tight end here. All right. So it looks like uh, that is, and then you would think more uh, on the lines of a draft pick. No, I'm thinking of free. No, I'm saying at free the agent. combine, they, they were pretty active meeting with tight end agents at the combine. So I think they'll add a, Bellinger caliber free agent. Okay. So they're not really looking for necessarily a standout at tight end. No, I think they're looking for somebody else's number two and okay. they'll piece it together. Wide receiver and Hyatt came in as a rookie. Uh, Robinson is Slayton. So the, all three of them are back. Uh, and then you take a look at the other guys who are free agents, uh, including Hodgins, who's a restricted free agent. So what do you think? And, and uh, Gunner, of course, uh, being uh, the, the primary returner. So how do you see this shaking out? Uh, the, the top three, are they happy with the three guys that are right there, Hyatt, Slayton, and Robinson? They're happy with them. Uh, I think they'd be happier with them as two, three, four instead of one, two, three. Okay. Um, so does that mean Calvin Ridley? Probably not. Um, I think – what it ends up meaning is the Giants use one of their top fifth, three top 50 picks on a receiver, whether that's number six, so Dunze and neighbors, or whether that's look, I think there's something like 15 most draft guys. I don't know what our lads has, but most draft guys have like 13 to 15 receivers graded with first or second round oh, grades. Yeah. So uh, I would say that that's very likely they draft one of those guys with the top 50 pick and hope he's a number one caliber receiver. And uh, then you have, then suddenly Slayton Hyatt and Robinson look better than they do right now. Okay. Shepard, so Shepard's gone. He'll probably retire. Oshevsky they'll want to re resign as a returner. Paris Campbell's gone. He never played. Uh, and I think that pretty, uh, uh, Hodgins, I would say pro they probably have some interest in, but not at the RFA tender price so they'll probably decline that and let him search around and see if he wants to come back on a minimum deal any chance that we're talking about quarterback but any chance that they would be interested in moving up a spot or two who knows three spots to pick up harrison no okay no no chance uh if they move up it's for a quarterback if they stay put then it could be a quarterback or Odunze, or they have too many holes, Greg. They just you 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 give up draft picks to go get your quarterback. You when you're in the spot they are in, you can't give up draft picks to go get a receiver because it's you need that draft pick for your corner number two or your safety number one or your right guard or whatever. You can't do it for a receiver. You can't do it, especially yeah. not when not when the gap between Harrison and Neighbors is probably this, and Neighbors and Odunze is probably this. Sure. So. And so, yeah, well, that's good. And, and look, I, I'm not even sure to tell you the truth that most from what I've witnessed myself as a Michigan fan and from what I've heard, I, I, I do question whether or not J.J. McCarthy would go that high. 
So if the Giants That's want the McCarthy, yeah, I mean, I, I, I yeah, I, you know, you don't want to trade down too far, but even if they traded down a couple of spots to get some uh, more capital, you can't, trade it, down. you can't trade below Atlanta, and you got to be wary of Atlanta trading up. So, all right, uh, offensive line, yes. Hey, this is as uh, ugly as it uh, could look outside, of course, of Andrew Thomas. I'm gonna. This is a bomb, and I'm just gonna drop it on the Giants' offense. Like you just got to start over, basically. Yeah. I, for the thirteenth time in the last ten years, basically, you have to start over. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Annoying. I don't know what to tell you. You have a center that you just have blind faith in, and you have an awesome left tackle who has struggled at times to stay on the field. Like, uh, um. The rest of it, I really, honestly, it's just it's just interchangeable guys. Basically, there's there's no one you can feel confident in. Yeah, there's uh, what right now. Let's see, we count uh, overall. You have four unrestricted free agent guards, I, I believe, right? And you've got a center, uh, also a free agent, and you got a couple of tackles that are free agents. So that's a, that's a lot of guys. Any of those guys, free agents, do you think the Giants want back? I mean, maybe at the right price. Like, if Ben Bredesen could come back and like not be guaranteed a starting job, he has some center guard flexibility. If you told me he'd come back on a minimum or close to a deal and be like the swing guard tackle, swing guard center, like, yeah, I could see them bringing him back. Sure. All right. Uh, and you think though that there's a, a real good chance? I well, remember they have a new offensive line coach and a new offensive coordinator, so they might have different offensive line blocking principles. Okay. And who, so who's the coordinator now? Kafka. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. They just, no, they just have a new, yeah. Kafka is still the offensive coordinator. Sorry. They just have a new offensive line coach. Offensive line coach. And Kafka called the plays last year, but you're not sure he's going to call it this year. Correct. Dave all very well could call the plays this year. Okay. Uh, so you, you're looking at definitely, two new starters on the offensive line and maybe three. It all depends on whether or not, but they'll definitely say, bring in competition for Neil. Two, Yes. Two new starters and a competition for Neil. So let's call it two and a half. Okay. All right. So special teams, as we wrap up, uh, Gano Gillen, they're, they're, they'll be back. Uh, is Gillen a free agent? No, no, he signed a two year deal, right? He'll be back. Uh, they have a new special teams coordinator, though. Okay. So, uh, so you just, you never know what you know. Those guys, uh, more than anything, more than offense or defense, special teams coordinators kind of like their guys. But uh, Gillen will be back, and then Gano missed the end of last season with an injury, a leg injury. Uh, so I assume he'll be back. But he was a favorite of Thomas McGahey, the former special teams coordinator. So I assume. Gano will be back when he's healthy. He's one of the best kickers in the league. But uh, could they look for a plan B or for competition in case he's not healthy? I guess, yeah. All right, yeah, because there's a lot to – and Gunner. Uh, I, would think he'll, I would think he'd resign as the returner. He did a pretty nice job. Have you, But again, new coordinator. He could have his own returner in mind. Have you – and I know there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on here uh, with the Giants and the Jets – for uh, quite a while, but uh, compare this, this off season, this team right now, the way they are, has it been this bad? Uh, <laughs> it's been pretty bad for pretty long. I mean, a couple of years ago, they were running uh, quarterback sneaks on third and nine, right. With Jake Fromm at quarterback. So like, uh, that's true. It, it's been pretty bad for pretty, uh, a couple before that they had all the guys quit on Ben McAdoo, his whole locker room basically quit. And like, uh, you know, they benched Eli and it became a total disaster, public relations disaster. Like it's been pretty bad for pretty long. I would say, I would say it's pretty bad right now. Like they, uh, Dayball's under fire. Obviously he lot this off season that he didn't get a lot. Him and Wink had shouting, cursing matches and, you know, a lot of coaches left his staff and there's a lot of talk that he needs to change his demeanor uh, with the way he handles his coaches. Players seem to get along with him, but other coaches, uh, he might be having some of the New England 
uh, problems where you do things too much the Bill Belichick way with your staff. You overwork them. You expect too much. You second guess them. Uh, and uh, the roster. I mean, I would say honestly, I'd say the roster right now is as is as thin as I've ever seen it. And that could be because they're about to go spend a lot in free agency, or because they have more draft picks, or whatever. But the roster right now is as thin as I've ever seen it. And they've had. Since I started covering the team, they've had a three-win season, a four-win season, a five-win season, and a six-win season. And I'd say those rosters are all better than this one. Wow. Uh, how do you think Shane's done at this point? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, the bar's on the ground. He's better than Gettleman. So, like, he's he's done good at finding scrap heap guys. That's been – uh a, a specialty of his, fought, getting right. a lot out of a little. Uh, guys like Jason Pinnock. Um, he's hit a couple of his first round draft picks, Thibodeau and Banks. Evan Neal's a huge whiff. He hasn't gotten anything really out of the back ends of his drafts. And his free agency record is about, you know, about mediocre. Bobby O'Karake is a slam dunk, but like Glowinski and Campbell have been uh total whiffs so uh darren waller trade i mean you gave up a third round pick so like i'm not i mean it was worth the risk at the time but if you only get one injury plagued year out of waller for a third round pick well that's not a great trade so but i get it i, I would do it again i mean it was worth the risk at the time but uh yeah, you didn't know. Uh, he got a lot. Player. He got a, yeah. the other side of that is that third round pick came from the Chiefs for Kadarius Tony, who he fleeced on the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, Kadarius Tony's not even an NFL player, really, and he That's got true. a third round pick for him. Yeah. So I would say he's been okay. He's like a. They went to the playoffs his first year. I'd say he's like. I'd give him like a C so far. And of course, like any other team in the NFL, the, the GM is only going to succeed if he finds his quarterback. So Correct. that's and that's one thing. Look, let me say this, Greg. I am very passionate about this. I cannot stand the narrative that like Joe Shane and Brian Dable deserve to pick their guy. When you gave Daniel Jones a four-year, <laughs> yeah. hundred and sixty million dollar contract, you picked him as your guy. Now you're. Yeah. Good. I'm not saying you only get one choice, but this isn't your first chance to pick a quarterback if you do it. This is your redo. You don't get a third chance. This is. You're picking McCarthy or or Knicks or Russell Wilson or whatever you do to replace Daniel Jones. This is chance two. You picked your guy. He Daniel Jones was drafted by Gettleman, but he you adopted him. He, Gettleman might be his father. You're his stepfather. You adopted Daniel Jones when you gave him that contract. And if you want to scrap it out, that's fine. But this is shot two, not shot one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh and that's it. You're right. Because that's what also leads you to believe that it's going to be a young kid as opposed to a veteran. It just doesn't really seem to make, because, but then again, you know, because the bottom line is if you make a mistake, the really good business uh, people will admit it right away and then try and move on from it instead of ego wise. No, you know, it's not a mistake. I can make this work. And of course, I'm talking about Daniel Jones. If they believe it's a mistake, just move on. Just go right away. Just move on. Bring in another young quarterback, not, not a Russell Wilson. Bring in another young quarterback and go that route. Unless you truly believe Daniel Jones is your guy and he's and he's only because he's injured, that's the excuse. So, I don't know. I, I just think it's better to go out and get another guy. I never believed in Daniel Jones to begin with. but um, Neither did I, but, but, yeah. but they did. So, like. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one. All right. Uh, Ryan, uh, excellent job as always. And I look forward to getting the opportunity at some point to uh, maybe we'll talk about the other New York football team. I know I'm going to be talking about the Jets uh, on this network in, in, in about a week or so after free agency. So uh, we'll do that. And then, of course, the draft will come and there'll be a lot to talk about after that. So uh, what are you working on right now? My top 30 NFL free agents is my project for today. So uh, it's a noticeably thin list. Uh, I thought it was a great free agent class last week. And then a bunch of guys have re-signed, what was it, eight franchise tags. So, like, 
literally, I think 10 or 11 of the guys on my top 30 that I had Monday have come off and I have to find 10 or 11 new guys to uh, come on. So is, uh, is, is T Higgins the one guy that could still get traded regarding the tag? Yeah. I mean, no, I think, I don't think he's the only guy he could get traded, but I don't, I don't think he's the only guy on the tag. Okay. Oh, the Jerry is neat is probably all, is almost definitely going to get traded. Uh, so he got tagged. I would say that he's almost a lock to get traded. Um, I'm trying to think who else got the tag. Um, Duggar. Duggar. Right. Well, Duggar got the transition tags. The so. transition tag. Okay. Um, Brian Burns. Brian, Burns. Brian, Brian yeah. Burns is a candidate to get traded for sure. Yeah. So I'd say those are probably the three most likely guys. All right. So we'll be on the lookout for that because, again, we'll remind everybody, even though free agency is – on uh, Wednesday, uh, we'll know, we'll know what's going on on a Monday. Yep. That's that's the unfortunate thing. You know, Tampering. Way. What's that? Tampering period. Yeah, yeah. But we all know what's Let going on. Let me tell on. you something, Greg. I was in Indianapolis for the combine. The, tam- the tampering's well underway. It doesn't start. <laughs> I can imagine. All right, Ryan. Thank you. We'll talk to you again real soon. Appreciate it as always. I'll see you.